Hey there, Comic-Con fans, my name is Sergey, and I'm with Frogverse, the studio behind multiple video games about the world's greatest detective Sherlock Holmes and his loyal companion Dr. Watson. Yes, that's right, if some of you did not know, there are numerous games about Sherlock, 8 to be precise, and there is actually one more game coming. It is called Sherlock Holmes Chapter 1, and it is uh, the first chapter, the very beginning of the adventures of the genius detective that will explore his younger times. In this game, you will see how the Sherlock that we all know and love was born, how he transitioned into this eccentric genius that casts emotions aside to get to the bottom of his investigations. And chapter 1 is coming to PC as well as current and next-gen platforms sometime in 2021. At this point, some of you might wonder, how does one even go about making a game about such an iconic character? How does one create this feeling that you, the player, are in fact Sherlock Holmes, that you have this power to see what others don't and that you are able to solve some of the most perplexing mysteries that no one else can. Because let's be honest, most people sadly do not have Sherlock's legendary deduction skills, so there has to be a balance between feeling extraordinary like Mr. Holmes on the one hand, but still being able to make our own decisions and mistakes like a normal person. Ah, Lestrade. What is it this time? To achieve this goal, we give the player certain tools that embody the concept of Sherlock's iconic skills, but in an interactive way. One of these tools is called character observation. Do you remember that famous Afghanistan dialogue that happened between Sherlock and John when they first met? What am I asking? Of course you do. Sherlock was able to figure out who John was just by observing his clothes and making complex but possible deductions. And we wanted to recreate this skill in our game as well give you the time to observe and make your own deductions. Numerous suspects and witnesses will try to whistle out of telling the truth, and you, as Sherlock, can analyze their attributes and behavior and use it to your advantage and to reveal their secrets. You have indeed suffered a great loss, Mrs. Carey. Nevertheless, I believe it will be less of a burden for you soon. Yes. Life with Peter was never easy, but he was still my husband. And of course, one of the more exciting parts of not only Sherlock Holmes games, but detective games in general, is the ability to piece available clues together, make your own theories and pursue your own leads. Of course, Sherlock does it all inside his head, in his special mind palace, instead of reorganizing evidence pinned to a whiteboard. So when you find clues in our games, you can combine these clues and create a theory, a logical conclusion. And some theories are more obvious and require less thought, but obvious does not always mean correct. It might happen that one small piece of evidence is all you need to turn how you see your case upside down. And since our games do not tell you that you've missed something, you can only blame yourself if you were not thorough enough and condemned an innocent person. You are guilty of the murder of Black Peter. Confess now and your punishment may be more merciful. No! I didn't kill him! Your motive? The valuable securities that Peter Carey stole from your father. Carrie refused to return the bond certificates, and then he threatened you. You were afraid, and in your panic, you took the harpoon and made your lucky throw. But that's not true! You're a liar, Mr. Nelligan. It's all over now. And yes, it is actually possible to make the wrong choice in our later games. We were a little bit iffy about giving you the option to fail your investigation, because we did not know how people would react. Lots of fans would probably say that Sherlock simply cannot fail, even though, yes, he actually did fail to achieve his goals in some stories. And we realize that taking away that burden, that responsibility for that final choice from the player, diminishes the experience in a significant way and makes it very anticlimactic. Speaking of which, once you have caught up with your suspect, no matter right or wrong, you will have the option to decide, in fact, what you want to do. Do you want to apply the letter of the law and place blame accordingly? Or do you want to try and understand the person in front of you, understand their motivation for committing a crime? We want you to be the judge, the jury, and the executioner in our games. Our goal is to create morally gray areas to encourage you, the player, to confront yourself and ask yourself these questions. Is it justice if I turn this person in? What would I do if I were in their shoes? And once these questions are asked, you will know what you want to do. So there you go. Here is how we create this feeling that you are in fact the extraordinary Sherlock Holmes while still giving you the room for your own deductions and agenda. Thank you so much for your time and I hope you liked our video. If you have a question to ask, 
please feel free to reach out on Twitter, on Facebook. And in the meantime, please enjoy the rest of Comic-Con. Cheers. Thank you.